Sorry, can Oh, the worrying. How's everybody doing tonight? <laughs> Hope everybody's doing well. Welcome to On the Air with Dawn and Jan. This is the March installment of our monthly show. Joining us this evening are two very special guests who will be answering some viewer questions. Okay. Hi, Dawn. How you doing? Money Mom, how are you co-hosting the show tonight? I'm doing wonderful, and thank you for having a group of us. It's a lot of fun to meet other frugal people, so thank you very much. Amazing. With me, we have Debbie from the How Debbie Saves channel. How you doing, Deb? Good. How are you, Deb? <laughs> hi. And of course, oh, hi. And we have Steve Young from the Steve Young 74 channel. How you doing, hi, Steve? Hey. Good. You know, How we're going to jump right. Oh, good. And great to yeah. see everybody. Cool. Thank, Thank you. you so much for being here. Dawn, yeah. we're going to jump right into it. I know you have a couple of questions for Debbie. We'll just jump right into it. And, and some were during the show. And Jan, please let me know when. I have my own special question that gets asked quite often, too, as an additional one. Absolutely. So I'll let you let me know when a good time is for that, okay? Sure. Okay. So my first question is, what is your opinion about credit card debt uh, in general? Do you think that, you know, like... For example, is it okay, in your opinion, to do 12 months no interest? And do you think it's okay to have a little bit of consumer debt rather than always digging in savings? I, I do think it's okay to have consumer debt as long as it's something that's manageable. When people start going, like, there's, I, I strongly believe that there's a difference between, like, regular credit card debt, like you charge things and then you pay as much as you can, if not the whole thing, by the time that the bill comes around. But mm -hmm. when you when you your credit card debt starts getting excessive, it's usually because you're living above your means or you don't have a budget. And then at that point, the debt can continue to go get deeper and deeper. And then that's when you get into like severe credit card debt where you're going to be paying the minimum payments and you're going to really be a victim of high interest. That makes sense. Now, I'm not sure if this is why this person wrote this question because mm -hmm. we get asked questions. I know of some folks that they don't make enough money for the month, okay? And mm -hmm. so what ends up happening is when they have emergencies come up, they use their credit card as an emergency fund, and yes. that can get folks into trouble, I think. Absolutely. They either need to cut back on their spending, but I mean, I know people that are on bare bones budgets. Mm -hmm. They don't think they can cut anything else, and mm -hmm. at that point, they may need to get additional sources of income. Absolutely. Sometimes, sometimes that the num like I believe the numbers don't lie. So when I sit down with my clients and we go over the budget, most of the time I try to make the best out of the income that they have coming in because I don't want to add additional stress to them to be like it's an income problem because it might not be an income problem. And I get I get clients coming up to me and saying to me like when we first start they're like oh I I don't spend anything extra on anything I have a bare bones budget and I'm not saying that people don't but my experience is. They believe that. But once you start tracking your expenses for an entire month, the numbers don't lie. You'll see that you are going to a drive through that you didn't need to, or you're getting like a few cups of coffee that you didn't need to. And I'm not saying not to do that, but small amounts add up to a big expense. And then, mm. and then you might be thinking, I have a bare bones budget. I cook every day. I, you know, I don't go eat out any, at all, but you know what? You're getting extra coffee or, you know, you're getting extra snacks at the drive through You know, it's not a meal, but you're hungry, you're driving. So things do add up. So although if someone does have a bare bones budget and they're not making it, then it is an income problem. But I really would stress not to use credit cards as an emergency fund because I've gotten that question too. Like, I don't have an emergency fund, but I have a credit card. Well, an emergency fund should be a savings account that you earn interest on. You're not paying interest on. So that, mm -hmm. that, that's something. And then when an emergency happens, you at least have something in savings. So the whole emergency doesn't go on that credit card, you know? And unfortunately in, in March and in April, something that I've been stressing on my channel is that the credit card interests are going to go up. 
So oh. if you have a 20% in, um, interest on your credit card, they're saying it could go up to 25%. They're going to be allowed to do that. And all they have wow. to do, and I'm not trying to panic anyone, but I just want to make it clear. Like all they have to do, all credit card companies have to do is send you that little pamphlet. And I'm sure we're all familiar with it. And it, and, and it has like, it's many pages long, but the font is really small. Like you have to kind of look at it because anytime they send you that, that's all they have to do to check off the box because they've already done their legal requirement because they're notifying you that something is changing in your credit card agreement. It could be higher interest. It could be higher fees that they're charging you, late fees. And so I'll be honest with you, because I pay my credit card in full, I don't generally even read those little booklet things. I don't I don't know anyone that does. You know, and my nine to five, I work for attorneys and I read contracts all day long. Like I even like would be have to need a magnifying glass in order to read that tiny little print. But that's what they do. They do that not because they expect you to read it, but they expect you to throw it out. But then yeah. they're gonna, then you're gonna continue to charge. They're expecting that. And now the interest rates are going to go higher now because they're going to be allowed to do that up to 25%. So that's wow. why it's so important now more than ever with the prices going up that people really start tracking their expenses, especially wow. if you're in a bare bones budget. I think Thank they call that an arbitrary it. notice or something to that effect. Sorry? Something about arbit I think they call that an arbitrary notice. I think I, I've heard it. I've heard it be called a, a, a credit card agreement. I've heard it be called. Yes. Um, a, there's another term I can't think of right now, but but that's what it really is. Your banks do it, too. Your banks will mm -hmm. send you the same thing because because they're starting to raise up their their um, when you go when you their overdraft fees, you know, the the, the fee. The fee well, I have a good yeah. segue to Steve now. I have an excellent yeah. Steve. I have an excellent question for you, Steve. Steve, what are your thoughts on credit cards with annual fees? Well, credit cards with annual fees, I think. To some people, it can be beneficial. To some people, it's not beneficial um, because if this is where it does become beneficial, I feel if you get the card and you spend, oh, I'm just going to give a number. It's not an, it's just a figurative number. Let's say you spend twenty five hundred dollars on that card. Somehow, within spending that twenty five hundred, you make up paying that annual fee amount somehow um but then again if you are not able or you're not one to put that kind of money on a credit card and you use it conservatively like it was meant to be used then i can't see having an annual fee card i myself would not get that card i don't my, of the of the four that i have currently none of them are annual fee um i'm not I'm not a fan of them, but, you know, I guess everybody, you know, is, is different in that in that aspect. Absolutely. Steve, before I forget, at this particular time, is it better to buy a new or a used car? Um, I myself, if I was to go and purchase, I would probably purchase something within two to three years old, mainly because if you go to the dealership and you buy a $35,000 car, as soon as you sign your name on that line, you're handed the keys and you drive off that lot. Your car is only worth 20, maybe 21,000 because of depreciation. And it happens just like that. So sure. I myself would much rather go and buy a two, maybe a three year old car where that residual value or that depreciation has already fallen off. So it's actually better in the long run, but that's that's how what that's what I would do in the car. Oh, thank you, Steve. John, I think this is the time you have a question, an additional question for Debbie, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, and that's you know what? Would it be okay if I also asked Steve the same question? Because Steve that, I, might have some ideas too, if it's okay. Actually, well, yeah. any of you can answer start this. off with Debbie, you know, because okay, you want to. Okay, that's we'll start with you, Debbie. No disrespect or anything. I just th I think every this is the kind of question I would love to get feedback from all of you and viewers. One big thing that I have happened have happened have had happen on the last several years on my channel is there are some folks, no judgment, because I'm not walking in their shoes, that seem to be in situations where maybe I've given ideas or suggestions um, on, you know, how to maybe get out of their current bare bones budget situation. But 
they, you know, I've maybe suggested, you know, possibly obviously budgeting and maybe cutting back, but they feel like they've cut back. I've suggested other little side hustles and gigs, but there are some folks that I've made all these suggestions and it doesn't seem like any of them are a good fit for their lifestyle. And like I said, I don't know. Um, for example, there's some people that I know of that are on disability or social security. And because of some health issues, they maybe aren't able to work. And so I just want to know if you have someone like Debbie, this would be to you or if anyone that is in a really tight situation financially, mm -hmm. but they're not able to work maybe mm -hmm. because of health issues and they're on a bare bones budget. Do you have any ideas or suggestions for them? Anybody? One, or maybe the, how we can help or encourage them. The one thing I would say well, I is that it. before you look at any about increasing any income, is to look at the expenses that you have. Like even if you think you have a bare bones budget, I really suggest that you call up your provider because right now, right now providers are competing against each other more than ever. I've had clients that have slashed their cell phone plans by half and they thought they couldn't get it any lower. Okay. I have one car insurance that I pay up, that I pay up front and because I've been working from home for the past two years, I called them up. And even though I pay up front because I get a significant discount, I don't like doing that. I've talked about that many times, but I do because I want that discount. Um, they, I've called them up and I told them, I said, you know, you had me going 22 miles to and from work. You are longer going 22 miles to and from work. And I've gotten quotes from competitors. I want to see how you can work with me. And they're like, absolutely. I got them to cut down $35 a month. I got credited back on my account, which they send me a check for $150 for making a seven minute phone call that day. I, the Amazing. other day, my husband, my husband, we have an alarm system for our house. Yeah. And I, I was cleaning the kitchen the other day and my husband was putting um, our little one to bed. He texted me and he said, the alarm went up $6. We just got notified. And so I, I thought to myself, oh yeah, I called my cable company and I got it reduced by $35 on a seven minute phone call. And I, I documented it cause I'm making a, I'm making a video on it. like. There That's are wonderful. Things that you can work with yes. the bones budget that you have and reduce it yes. more. Groceries, we've all covered it. Like that would be one of the basic ways. One. It's a huge one. Meal planning, meal planning saved me five thousand dollars the first year. Thank I did. you. I my first credit card. Right. Like looking at what you have before you go shopping. Shopping the front and the, and the back page of the of the circular. There are so okay. many things that you can do with a budget yes. that you have to find extra cash so that you can start putting money away in a savings account and feel comfortable. Debbie, I have to jump in here a minute. I will never for my, and anyone else listening, I will never for the life of me understand why someone refuses to even try to pick up that phone or make an attempt to see if they can slash their bill. Maybe they don't realize that these companies are negotiable at times. Oh, yeah. And, and I'd like to mention one more thing before I forget. My client yesterday, yes. she had a hundred and thirty-five dollar cable bill. It's cable and internet. She got it cut down to thirty-five dollars because she found oh. some, she found something. And oh, if you no. want, I'll tell you afterwards so you can put it on the show notes. But it's it's a service that she's only paying fifteen dollars for, it, and it's the same exact channels that she has. So she's canceling her cable. So all she has to pay for is internet and fifteen dollars a month for this streaming thing. And she doesn't have oh, a new wonderful. TV either. I asked her that. I asked her that. I said, do you have a new TV? She said, no, her TV is like almost 10 years old. And she's able to do this. So there are ways that you can find it. But just, just, to, just, to, brief, just to make it brief, cell phone, you can call and cut. Cable, you can call and cut. Because they're always wanting to keep your business. They'd rather keep your business and give you a lower amount than lose you all together. Mm -hmm. It's car insurance. That's another one. If you have an auto, if you have, if you have an alarm system on your house, you can call and cut that too. Your, 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 um, your water bill. I cut my water bill down just by simply using my services at night. So the dishwasher saved me $20 a month because I run my dishwasher at night instead of during the day, $20 Amazing. a month. And in the morning I clear it out. And then at night it's loaded up again. I run in at night there. You, you, your utility companies will start charging you less. After a certain time, all you have to do is call and ask. Here in, here in New Jersey, it's seven o'clock. So at seven o'clock, if you run any appliance, it's less it's less expensive than it is during the day. 
there's so many ways that you can find money. And the best part is I'm always extra kind to the representatives on the phone because that will help, that will have them go above and beyond to help you. Because the very true before me was probably rude and nasty. So the nicer you are, I do the surveys at the end, takes me five minutes. I get the sure. representative's name. Like I, I go above and beyond for them because they're going above and beyond for me because I'm being kind to them from the get go. It's so important. Is she excited and passionate about this topic? <laughs> Can we get I, it? I, I think you brought up a great question, Money Mom, over I, there. I hope I know. I'm kind of, I hope I'm not taking away. I just want to add one thing. Mm -hmm. I'm not, I don't know anyone's health situation, mm -hmm. but I've known of folks that even are in poor health and mm -hmm. you, there's still ways that you can make extra money. I really do believe in the power of the side hustle and side gig. Mm -hmm. There are so many ways now to make money than ever before mm -hmm. even surveys even surveys Steve, I, I think I, wants I to jump in right yes, Steve, you had something. Well, something. debbie pretty much summed it up i don't mm -hmm. think i was i agree pretty i agree with what you said all of that definitely get on the phone make your phone calls because if you don't talk you know that's one way to get your money down mm -hmm. on you know to your, your money situation straight another way is what I like to do or I have done in the past, you know, Dawn, you mentioned side hustles. This is a good one. Um, go through your house and see what stuff you may have sitting around that you no longer use anymore. So mm -hmm. you could just as easily take it, put it up on Craigslist, put it up for sale. And um, that's one way to put some money back in your pocket because that item is no value to you, but mm -hmm. it may be for, say, three or four other people that see the ad that want to inquire and come and look at it and possibly purchase it. So very that's true. An excellent idea. Yeah. I just want to jump in and throw it. You know, today there's so many things to do online. So even if a person is physically challenged, mm -hmm. there's just so many options like completing surveys. Those yeah. surveys are very, very wonderful. People really mm -hmm. want people's feedback. Practice. Mm -hmm. Just take that minute and think about what you enjoy doing as well. That is mm -hmm. so important. You might find the perfect fit. Mm -hmm. so I think everybody here is just way too smart. What can I say? <laughs> <laughs> I think there might be one more question with within reason. You know, I just want to mention to the audience, I wish that we had more time to go through more questions, but unfortunately we do not because the time constraints for every one of us. But this question came up, and I'm going to throw this at everyone here, whoever wants to jump in. There was a person that said that they tend to pay off their debt, get a load of this, they pay off their debt, and then right away soon after, they find themselves falling down the rabbit hole again, getting into credit card debt. Anybody have any thoughts, Deb? Yes, absolutely. That, that, that is a red flag that this person is living above their means that's a, it's a red flag that their budget isn't working for them whether their budget is too restrictive if their budget is too restrictive it's just like a diet like i really feel like food and 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 money go hand in hand like have you ever gone on a diet and you're like you know what i'm throwing out carbs i'm never eating carbs again and then what happens like you you're, you start dropping pant sizes like you start feeling great oh wow yeah there's no carb thing as soon as you have a cookie <laughs> you're back on those cards <laughs> and then your pants don't fit. True. It's the same thing with money. It's the same yeah. thing with money. If your budget is too restrictive, give it time. It's going to blow up. And the next thing you know, not only are you going to be like, once again, living above your means, but you're going to be more in debt because that's what happens. So instead wow. of having a restrictive, if, instead of having a, a budget that's restrictive or living above your means, I really suggest for people that, that have this problem, which I see a lot of, is take a month and just track your expenses. Don't even tell your money where to go yet. Just find out where it's going. And then once you do that, now you've got numbers to play with. Now start seeing, can you call up providers and, 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 and save money that way? Because that way you don't feel it. You're still watching cable, but it's just less expensive. You're still using your phone, but it's just less expensive. Then from Amazing. there, okay, what not only do you, not only can you see what you can cut, but you see where your habits are and, and you see like the, the little self-sabotaging expenses that you don't realize you're doing that are costing you. And then maybe you cut back just a little bit on that. And next thing you know, you have a budget that's working for you. 
And when you have a budget that's working for you, you're no longer charging things because money comes in, money goes out, and you know exactly what you have left. See, uh, Steve, what are your thoughts on that? What I would do is if I get myself out of credit card debt, mm -hmm. the first thing I would do is go to my wallet, well, however how many credit cards I have, two, three, I would remove those cards out of my wallet, put it in a drawer or put it somewhere out of my sight mm -hmm. and hmm. forget about it. Because if you can't look at it, the temptation will not be there to make you want to use it again. Mm -hmm. And and I am a firm believer if you can just use regular cash money, ones, five, tens, twenties, and so on. When you make a purchase or when you buy something, it is a done deal once you make your transaction. Then you don't have to worry about, oh, how am I going to figure out how to pay pay it back? And you know, and then it adds up, it adds up. Because that card is temptation. Yes. I mean it's got temptation written all over Definitely. It. But if you don't have Money it, Mom, your, you got, sorry, go you, ahead, Steve. But if you don't have it in your sight, you can't use it. That mm -hmm. it's self discipline is what it is. Mm -hmm. True. Money Mom, you got any thoughts on this? Uh, well, then I'll throw all, in. Mind. I think I think you, Steve, and Debbie's ideas are all fabulous. I think they're great. And it's great because you have a variety. Uh, I use the cash envelope system. I hear a lot of people uh, are not able to use the cash envelope system. Some places where they live, some of these places do not accept cash. They accept cards. So some folks that I know, what they do is they'll have like a Visa gift card and whatever money they have for the month, say it's for groceries, pet food, beauty, cleaning products, restaurant, whatever. They have whatever the amount that they budget for that. They put that cash amount on like a Visa gift card. So I guess it's like a credit card, but mm -hmm. it's a gift card. And they put all that money on there and they take that with them. And when that money's gone, let's say they get paid once a month. And if they're like, oh gosh, I've got five days left and all I have is $10 left, you know, they just rein it in and then that's it. So wow. that would be my idea. Mm -hmm. I've done that. I've done what Dawn is mentioning. I have taken money and gone and put it on like a, a Visa gift card. And then, I mean, it's your own money. It, it looks just like a credit card. Yeah. But when you run out of money, you're, you're pretty much done until you're able to go back and reload it again. That's a good, that's a good method. I, I have. That's a, I that's have, a good thought. Yeah. I just want to throw in my thought and then we'll sum up oh, the yes. whole thing. Okay, I think that anybody that has a vulnerability, first of all, congratulations for being aware of your tendencies, whoever wrote that question. Mm -hmm. I think I that you get a big congrats for that. Yes, mm -hmm. everyone's questions, but really for being aware. However, maybe we could see looking at a credit card through a different prism because a credit card is merely a short term loan. If you always look at your credit cards, right, Steve, as short term loans and nothing more than that, it'll help a lot. It's about the mindset, in my opinion. Your opinion is correct because on my last video that I, not my last, but next to my last, I've talked about balance transfers. And I said the original intention of a credit card was oh. never designed to go into debt for years and years and years and years. It is a short term. It is a tool. It is a helping hand when you need it. If your car breaks down and it's between paydays, yes, fix your car. If you need groceries, that's a necessity. You put it on your credit card. But as soon as you have the funds, pay it off. Amen to that. Amen Does anybody to want to add anything before we close up the show? Steve, Debbie, anybody want to add anything? Just jump in. The only the only thing that I want to add is try to avoid using your debit card as a credit card. And and people do that, like Dawn said, like some places I've heard, luckily not by me, they don't take cash. Don't use your debit card as a credit card. I know it's designed to do that, but the amount of fraud that I'm seeing that's happening is it's 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 pretty it's getting pretty bad really fast and I just want to mean, warn Debbie? people people are breaking into like for example it just I don't want to drop names of stores because I know this is Chance Channel well, uh, the reason why is I don't have a debit card mm -hmm. 
people that have debit cards that have that, that are usually most likely have the Visa or MasterCard logo on it. So what you do is when you charge it, instead of it being a credit card, it's it, it automatically comes out of the account that it's linked to. So if you have so people that get their paycheck deposited into a checking account, some people don't want to use a credit card because they don't want to get into credit card debt, but they want to use a card because some places don't accept cash or they don't want to have cash on them. So they use their debit card as a credit card. So every time they charge, it comes out of their account, right? But the bad thing with that though, and I've seen it more, more, more times now, and it just seems to get worse and worse, is that stores are getting their security system broken into, especially around the holidays. This happens a lot around the holidays. And so what happens is, let's say, I don't want to name a store, but let's say like, you know, let's make up a store like, you know, Steve's Convenience Store. And I go and I use my, <laughs> uh, my card and Steve's Convenience Store. Steve. Sorry, Steve. <laughs> and, and Steve's Convenience Store gets gets hacked, which is so easy to do now. Now, now whoever hacks Steve's Convenience Store has everybody who's ever used a credit card, their credit card number. Well, when you when you try to, to charge a credit card, you can protect your credit card when you see something because you're checking your statements and you see something that's not yours. You tell the credit card company, they say, don't worry, you don't have to pay for it. We're freezing your account. We're sending you a new card. Have a nice day. Your money is protected. When you use your debit card, it is completely different. You would think that the bank is there to protect you, but that's not what's happening. What's happening is same exact transaction, right? I, someone, someone grabs my debit card number. Now it's not a credit card. Now that person goes to use my card. It's coming out of my checking account. So let's say they, they hacked my account, they've got my number and they're charging $100. I see $100 come out of my, my, my statement because I'm checking my statements. I call up the bank and I say, that's not me. And they say, okay, we're freezing that $100. So now that $100 is not accessible to me, even though it was my cash in my own checking account. The, that $100 is no longer mine. It's frozen for now while they investigate, which they can do for up to six weeks before wow. they determine whether or not I did that charge or not. So I'm out that $100 for that six weeks. So if you don't want to use a gift card like you suggested, that's when a credit card, I believe, is a better alternative than your There's debit. no question that credit cards offer protection, but we're talking specifically, uh, in, we were addressing the question about a gentleman that falls into credit card no, debt. I Thank you for pointing out about the protection um, yeah, protection aspect. I I meant it. I meant it because of what Dawn said about the gift card. Like, yeah, oh, absolutely. Yeah. Gift card, I yeah. think it's a, a I, I think it's important. Mm -hmm. I think I think all of that is important. Mm -hmm. And you don't have to ask me the question about the credit card uh, debt and falling back into it because I think Debbie and Steve answered it perfectly. Oh, absolutely. Listen, I want to thank everyone who participated, Debbie. Thank you. So, you know, by the way, in case you haven't figured it out by now, Debbie and Steve both know a little bit about money. We know money mom already knows about money. We already know, Dawn. <laughs> Sorry, Dawn. But That's Debbie, okay. Debbie, Debbie, you're a money coach. And we're going to link up your, do you still run that 30 minute freebie call for? Absolutely. Yeah. I'm happy, Please, I'm happy yeah, to help anyone reach out. Give me that link again. I'll be delighted to put it in the description box below. Steve Young, 74 channel. He has a wonderful channel, a random channel. Sometimes you'll hear wonderful financial stuff, but you'll also get to hear recipes too. A whole bunch of good stuff. Thanks so much, everyone. I would like to close out the show with my outro. Then we'll all come back and give a wave. Are you in? I hope I'm in. so. Let's see if it works. Bye, everyone. <laughs> Works. No. <laughs> it should. You know something? This thing is temperamental. Let's all wave goodbye. Everyone have an amazing evening. Come back next month and we're going to go to Dawn's channel and we'll check out future stuff. Thanks, everybody. Have a great okay, night. Thank you, everyone. Thanks for your bye -bye, time. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, Debbie. Thanks, Jan. Thanks, viewers. Bye-bye, Dawn. Bye-bye.